Brian, did you did you have braces? Yeah, I, I had braces. Yeah, your teeth are perfect, man. Oh, thanks, man. You too, Ashley. God, dang. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I have to tell my orthodontist. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> my, my mom definitely takes every moment just to, to remind me. Pay good money for them teeth. Right. Anytime somebody says you, you and your mom have the same smile. My mom's always like, "I'll thank our orthodontist." We have. The I same love it. My oh. mom loves you, Dio. Like loves you. Oh yeah, your mom is dope. I love like women of distinction. Like I feel like it 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 does it doesn't. There's no age limit to it. You can tell like somebody has had like an aura throughout mm-hmm. their whole life and yeah your mom definitely has that her energy is dope she just Thank you. her confidence and you can see it resonate like you know into you all like you and your brother and yourself it Thank was dope you. it was dope seeing you guys together that was tight <laughs> like <laughs> like that was actually like that's like something it was cool to see because i was um like fourth wall in it like damn i'm taking a look into ashley's life and watching a moment in your life like mm-hmm. oh shit that you know Ashley who's worked hard who's been a photographer who's done this and that her work is up in DC for her family to see and I was sitting right. back like damn this is tight and you can <laughs> see your mom being like you go girl cool you're all standing there we're recreating some shit y'all standing there I'm taking a picture oh this is dope <laughs> so yeah that's like a memory I'm always gonna hold on to for sure thank you thank yeah. you I appreciate that tell I love her too oh okay okay <laughs> I'm gonna tell my dad too. He's like, oh. hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I rock with your dad. That's my dude too. <laughs> Mr. Bing. Right. It's a Bing thing. I was saying all sorts of stuff that day. They was like, oh, nice one, buddy. The whole family, right? <laughs> the whole family. It was like generations of Bings were like, yo. Like, how original. What's next? <laughs> What's next? One day, one day there's gonna be somebody. It's like, it's like somebody, somebody's quest. They're gonna come along and be like King King Arthur. And like that's gonna be like the like the one that yeah. was like pro- prophesized to come along and like give like the the, the best bing bing pun <laughs> <laughs> we've heard them all at this point at this point we've heard them all oh, yeah well look we're here um at another episode of shooting with shooters um but this one is something that is familiar to me because ashley you somebody that i've been on previous shows uh or a previous show that i that i started called we're getting better a while ago um when i was still in maryland right around the time maybe before this show started um i think might have been a few episodes before dio we, we did our show that eventually led into this but um you know ever since that show we stayed in contact um i actually i always i'm always going to tell you this you know uh, especially when, when my wife is around um you were my first choice for my wedding photographer you know <laughs> but ashley is so popping and so much of a great photographer that she's booked up you know like a year in advance and I was that's like, dope yeah listen so. listen ashley he's being too modest with the words of admiration um in the early in the early um iterations of the podcast with the audio aspect brian will always bring up ashley bing and this is before i knew you mm-hmm. but he always you know when it came to certain photography he always brought you up and i was like dang i think i've seen this girl but then i remember just asking brian like, sure, like who is it he's like yo she's dope check her out and i was like bet so brian was already stamped for approvaling you yeah. um you know left and right for ages and that's the first time i heard him say that about the wedding that's really that's really powerful thank yeah. you thank yeah, well, you and it's funny that you say that because i'm trying to transition out of it now <laughs> So I know, I know. This, this is a shooting with shooters exclusive, y'all. <laughs> you heard it here first. So before we get too far, let's just do a, do a little introduction. I'm Brian Summers, photographer and content creator. My name is Dio Kosoko, photographer, host, and content creator. I'm Ashley Bing, just a girl with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another episode of Shooting with Shooters. Shooting with Shooters. <laughs> All right. There we go. Nice. So, okay, so Brian, can we take it back to we're getting better and like Ooh. Hey. Oh, open a bottle? Oh, oh. Hey. listen, so I'm not a drinker, but 
I do get down with the Shirley Temples. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. She yo, the prop just ready, Ashley. And look, Listen. and like the thing, the thing that I like about it is that like this, this, this setup right here, this is real nice and warm, and like that drink just like set it off. Yeah, that drink was popping. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Listen, check it out. Check it out. Yo, Brian, Ashley brought up a great point. To those that don't know, to the <laughs> listeners that don't know about We're Getting Better, um, and Brian, I'm going to talk about it because I want you to just sit back and take your roses. Um, we're Getting Better podcast was Brian interviewing and talking to photographers, creatives. I think you had, you just had some various people on there, but just t- talking about their stories and their their path and their journeys in their space. And it was really intriguing because it was actually Ashley's episode I listened to and James's episode that made me like get on top of Brian and be like, damn, you ain't recorded me yet. Like I literally was like, this is so dope. I want to be on here. I'd never really wanted anything like that, but they started every show off like Ashley just mentioned with a, a little twist of the, of the bottle top because Brian is a, is a, is a beer connoisseur. Brian, you accept that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't. No, I hesitated because I haven't drank a lot. I haven't drank a lot of beer in a while. But it's holiday season. Shout out to the DJ. You know, but it's time. It's time to uh, time to get festive and crack open some beers and fill up some mugs. But I haven't really been drinking a lot this year, like beers. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> I messed. But with that was beers. a great throwback, Ashley. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Hey, hey. Well, let's just go ahead, go go ahead and uh, get into it. Uh, I can go I ahead and this, get it. I got, too. I got a cup of tea here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what you yeah. got over there, Dad? What you drinking? Nothing? I'm playing. I need to get a Michelob. I'm playing games, y'all. Yeah, I thought you had the little the little cooler like right there next to you. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just I'm just getting my mind right. H two O, yo. Sometimes, H-O-O. sometimes you gotta hydrate. Hydrate. <laughs> hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Y'all singing, singing about. <laughs> look, look, if 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 James was on here, we'd have we'd have, have a, 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 a exactly a little barbershop up. trio. Little, little, look, Yo, yeah, we should start, actually. Question. We should just start off one show and just give them that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got I gotta come in here with a with a, with a harmonica. <laughs> so free. Get the note right. <laughs> Either that or I come in here like bruh man with the kazoo. Oh <laughs> Playing, shit. Pick up the pieces. <laughs> pick up the pieces. <laughs> Hit them with that right quick. See, this is what happens when you record late. You're delirious. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yes. But this is the realness. This is the yeah. authenticity of creatives. Like a Miss Ashley Bing. Hello, oh, hello. <laughs> here we go. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So we are here to celebrate, you know. Uh, you and participating in this project that was celebrating melanin and black heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, this project, it uh, is a product of the situation that we're in this year with mm-hmm. social distancing, COVID and everything. And of course, social justice. It seems like it's a, you know, it's an ongoing thing. Four years ago, I had this opportunity to work with Union Market with the We Love You Project. And now four years, fast forward, um, we're at a situation again where it's necessary to, um, you know, utilize art and activism. And uh, Ali, Mom, and Jody at uh, Union Market have been, you know, always been there to like think about how to incorporate art and utilize that space and understanding where they are in in that community. Um, and they reached out to me uh, to be able to to put these wheat pasted images throughout the throughout the, um, the market and when they asked me to do it it was last not last minute but it was like you know fast pace right. and i had to think about some people on the fly that i knew had a nice representation of work that represented you know black people and people that were tied to the area whether they were born there or uh worked there um or have been there for a large por- portion of their life or you know it's like somebody like jeremy who has had you know he has his children born in the area so they're part of the area as well so you are again somebody that always comes to the forefront of my mind when it comes to every time photography <laughs> thank you so you know i definitely had to had to like you know i mean i mean somehow try to see if ashley can be a part of this project um and you were definitely available so i want to take this time to say thank you for that and also thank you ashley uh, Thank you. Talk about those images. Absolutely. And, you know, Brian, I want to thank you for even thinking about me because I've been doing photography at this point in February, it'll be 10 years full time. And I have not seen my work Mm. 
as an installation or like in a gallery and I guess that's on some people's plate as like, this is where I want to get. And it was never, I never really thought about it. But then once I saw it, it was like, damn, like, this is what it looks like. It's nice to see it printed and up where people are passing by, even if they didn't go over there for it, they kind of, they're walking around and kind of stumble across it. So I, I thank you for even thinking about me for that opportunity. And like, if, you ever had a person that was like, he's not heavy, he's my brother, it's definitely mm. you because you're always wow. thinking of like pulling other people with you and that is just so admirable. So thank you. Wow. Oh, that, that feels good to hear, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're a real one, bro. Hey, man. Well, you know, like the first time it was a opportunity for me to do it by myself and even in the, even in the beginning of the We Love You Project, it was... Um, I had people saying, hey, we can scale this up and you can give the art direction to other photographers in different parts of the country and we can just flood the internet and do this, you know, at a fast pace and scale it up. And it was honestly intimidating. Uh, and I wanted to hold on to the project because it was it was my project. I had just come up with it, even though it was one that incorporated our people. It was still yep. something that I wanted to make sure it didn't you know, get too crazy. Um, but this time around, again, I was like, I had to make sure that, you know, second time, it's not just me, it's, right. you know, if I want to do something that's going to be a representation or show more than just, you know, black men, <laughs> I can't, I, I can't do an accurate job in showing a black woman because I'm not mm. a black woman. You know, I can, I can, I can only show what I, what I, what I know or what I, what I've been around mm -hmm. um, and the same for other communities. So if, if, if I want to pull people, people into something to represent us, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. So. Yeah, that's fair. Please. She, I mean, she got to tell us a little bit about herself, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All you right, got, well. <laughs> let the people know what we've come to know and appreciate. <laughs> All right, so a little bit about me. Like I said, I've been doing this almost full time, 10 years now. Um, I kind of got pushed into it by the grace because I was laid off from my job. Mm. And I had just purchased a camera, not because... I thought I was going to be some big time photographer. I just like creating memories and capturing memories of my family and my friends. That was my goal. It wasn't to use a camera to make money or to be known as this awesome photographer. None of that was even like on my mind. So once I got laid off, I'm like, okay, what do I enjoy doing? What do I like doing? And I made a list of all the things I like doing and I just kept coming back to taking pictures, taking pictures. And like I said, like, I don't even think I was the best picture taker because I won't even call myself a photographer at that point. I wasn't the best picture taker, but then I would see other photos that people took and I'd be like, well, why'd they do this? And why is their finger in the way? And just like small things that I guess people never really paid attention to is like, why is there so much ceiling in this picture? It's like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I do have somewhat of an eye. So after I got my camera, I started taking pictures of people for free because you know, it's one thing to have a camera, but it's another thing to know how to use your camera with people. Yes. And it's like, if you can't communicate what you need that person to do, it's like, you'll never get the shot. So I started doing it for free and people would post it on Facebook and say, oh, Ashley took this picture of us. Ashley took this picture of us. And then at that point, people would reach out to me like, oh, Ashley, I saw you took this picture of such and such. You think you could do that for me? Hmm. It's like, sure, for $20. So they're like, all right. So I'm like, okay, well, got me $20 and I'm still <laughs> learning, right? So then the next person come in, now it's $30. And it just kept kind of growing from there. And then I got a mentor. I took workshops, went to uh, conferences. So then I started trying to learn the craft instead of just kind of figuring it out on my own because you can only go but so far on your own. But when you have somebody who is a few steps ahead of you or a lot of steps ahead of you, they bring you up faster. So with that, I learned different things and I got into the photography community and then I started hanging around photographers. So now like the conversation is different. And so I've been a wedding photographer, branding photographer, family photographer. One thing I won't do anymore, newborns. Woo! That's not my lane. Woo! It's well, not my lane. That's a lot of work. For what happened there? Shot, what happened you know? there? So I refer people all the time. <laughs> like I'm not going to do this but i have the perfect person for you so it's i know people and i'm and i think people are so afraid to kind of give work to other people because they think oh this person's going to do better than me it's Listen. like it's not about that there's enough work out here for all of Everybody. us it's enough and 
you know, we all shoot very different, right? So your client, Brian, might not be my client. So it's like, and that's fine. So I want my people and I want my people to want me. So that's pretty much like at the end of the day, not only am I, I think people hire me for my work, but I think people also hire me for my personality. Mm. So that I think is one of the things that sets me apart from other photographers, because there are a few photographers that I think we have the same style. And like, sometimes I look at him like, mm, did I take this? Did somebody else take this? <laughs> Actually for like weddings, right? Because when I have a second shooter, I want that person to pretty much have my same style because I want the images to be kind of like seamless. I don't want you to be like, oh, somebody else took this picture. So what I'm saying is like, the thing that sets me apart from other people, especially with the same style as me, is my personality. And I think I'm approachable a lot more than some other people sometimes. So I don't know. I'm just me, a girl with a camera, like I said. Love it. <laughs> Uh, the personality goes a long way. Uh, Dio can definitely uh, attest to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talk. We talk about it all the. T- we talk about that all the, um, all the time. You know, essentially, it's like what what is the now separating factor with, for you and your clients? You know, why have they come to you when they could have went to anybody? And mm-hmm. you know, you're not just selling your work. You're selling an experience. I mean, <laughs> you know, your your clients are coming to you for you, and I think it's a great separating factor. And I can see why you know you get those clients. Actually, it's your energy. Your energy is amazing. Thank you. And I think you can, you know, but at the same time, right, Ashley, I think you can see your energy in your work. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of that, <laughs> that got, work now. Let's talk about that work. We got, we got, we definitely got some work to go over. <laughs> um, you know, and when I when I reached out to y'all, I said, "Hey, look, everybody, I said I need five images. We're gonna do twenty five images total, five images a piece. It's gonna be um, wheat pasted throughout the whole market. Um, and I wanted just to get a, and I, I gave you guys a vague description to be honest. I just said it was you know, very I, vague. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to send you. I'm Yo, like, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send me black. I was like, send me, send me people <laughs> that look like us. Um, no, but yeah, I again, I, I I chose you all because I know that even though my description was going to be vague enough, it's still going to be narrowed down to like your style so i knew actually you mentioned to me before like just in trying to categorize um your style or your genre is that you yeah. take uh milestones mm-hmm. so you know i, I know you know you say you're not going to do any more uh, newborns <laughs> but the other milestones you know whether it's a wedding you know or a, uh, a birthday or you know, just a special occasion so mm-hmm. i knew i was going to get a sampling of that i just didn't know what it was so right. um in no particular order, on uh, Dio, you got these up too. So actually, what we're looking at, this is the image we're looking at first. And I'm a big fan of Black Joy. I think um, for the longest time, you know, the only time we really got like a media pers- perspective of Black Joy was like shows like The Cosby Show. Actually mm-hmm. seeing, oh shit, that's a happy Black family, you yeah. know? And it was cool to see that on TV. Oh shoot, we're not fighting. We're not doing some other stuff. That's dope to see. I'm looking at, I don't know if it's a father and a daughter, yep. but the joy of the moment was definitely snapped by you where you just see, you see the way he's looking at her and you see her happiness. I don't know if he's, she's tickling her, but she's definitely just happy. And I think this imagery is very significant in 2020. Um, when you think of Kobe Bryant and, you know, the unfortunate passing of Kobe and his daughter, Gigi, mm-hmm. you know, there was the hashtag uh, girl dad. And yeah. Brian, we talk about this all the time. You know, the difference between me raising these boys and you raising your daughter. There's something w- with girls and their fathers. And Ashley, you know, I think I've even seen you with your father, your interaction. But this is this is that. Yeah. <laughs> and you you capture this. So please tell us about it. So the, it is a father and his daughter. The daughter is actually my goddaughter. So I have a very close relationship with my father. So anytime I see a daughter with her father, it just tugs at my heartstrings. So just like a father-daughter dance at a wedding, right? It's a very important moment because a girl's first love is her father. So she is learning how to be treated as a woman from her father. And that, and she's going to carry that through the rest of her days. And, you know, the mate that she chooses, 
she will remember, okay, this is how my father treated me. So these are the things that I'm going to accept. These are the things I'm not going to accept. These are my non-negotiables because I've had that strong foundation from my father growing up. So, and, you know, a part of that love, sometimes it's tough love, but a lot of times it's like admiration. So she's looking at him, he's looking at her, he's tickling her a little bit, like they're having a great time, but it is a really, really important relationship in my life. So I'm always trying to capture that for other people because I know how much it's going to mean later on down the line. Like right now, she doesn't understand the relationship that she has with her father. She just knows this is my dad and we have fun together. Mm -hmm. But when she sees that picture 20, 30 years from now, it's going to mean so much more because she's going to be like, wow, dad, we've always had this type of relationship. Not just as I'm older and start to understand things you know, that you said back then and things start making sense. And now that we're friends, I will know like when I was four years old, I had that same bond with you. So that is important for me when I'm capturing these different moments. I always kind of look through with my own eyes in my own life and like, how would I feel in that position as a four-year-old thinking about how my relationship is with my dad now? It's like, this is a moment that, you know, sometimes when I think of like portraits, people are always like pose and they're like super stiff most of the time, but I try to capture portraits in motion. Even though I'm not using a video camera, I like to get a moment and that is a moment with that photo. And when you see it, you can feel it. So that is always like my goal. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I, love, I love your description. I mean, Brian, we talk about uh, photos and how they last for years and, and whatnot, but the way Ashley just described it kind of touched my heart um, in the sense of when you, when you said specifically, daddy, look, we've always had that bond. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that's, that's wild. And then think about what that does for the father, the daughter, yeah. the father even feels validated. Like shit, I did something right. You know, validated. Yep. I'm over here. This pull it's, it's, it's pulling on my heartstrings. I'm over <laughs> here. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got a three, three year old going on, going on 30 year old. <laughs> Exactly. Ryan, I got to take more responsibility and getting you some pictures for you and your daughter, man. Ashley, too. We got we to hold them down. Yep. Look, man, she's, she's, she's to the point now where she's, like, comfortable taking photos, and she's asking Stina to take pictures of us together. You know, whenever Aww. I take a picture of her, she's like, Mommy, get a picture of me and Daddy. And I'm like, Aww. I'm That's like, dope. oh, me too. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> I get to be in a picture? <laughs> All right, right. She messed with me today? Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But uh this next shot though oh my gosh <laughs> it's almost like a segue i guess you know it's, it's you know the first one i believe the first one was had a baby girl correct mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so uh it goes from daddy and her daughter to possibly that daughter finding her mate earlier you know wow that's, you know the story you know um but it's a woman on the back of a man both wearing white she's had on these mustard pants he's got on khaki pants a little darker you can see the reflection of like um, like some some older building in DC is probably a Smithsonian or mm -hmm. something. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I <laughs> we talked about Colgate smiles earlier, but this it's one the, it definitely grinning from ear to ear. It's uh, the teeth yeah. for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, happy crest Colgate black uh, scope. This is a it's editorial or it's or it's romantic. Either way, it yeah. could go either way. Or or it's a tie commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so basically like you said you know we're, we're talking about joy right and kind of segueing from baby girl to this you want to continue that type of relationship throughout the rest of your life and for me like when I'm looking for a mate energy is important like I don't care what you look like I care about how one how you treat me to how I feel when I'm with you like, are you happy within yourself? Like, don't look at me to make you happy because I can't make you happy, right? You got to be happy within yourself and now we can be happy together. So that image is them being happy together, not somebody trying to be a missing puzzle piece. It's like, look, I'm my own person, but we can be together and be happy and having fun and live a great life with each other. And, you know, when you see the relate relationships, black relationships depicted in the media is always some drama, right? It's always, you ain't this, you ain't that. Well, you not doing this. And I don't like that. That's not the story that I saw growing up. So mm -hmm. I'm always trying to make sure the images that I put out are positive images because I'm going to reflect the things that I know. And that 
with them, the joy, that is what I know. That's what's in my life. So that's what I want to portray for everything that you see, unless it's like street photography, because I really have no control over that. <laughs> unless it's street photography, I want you to think, dang, like this is a joyous moment when you look at any image that I took. Love it. The love is amazing. Everything about this photo is amazing. Even the quality of the imagery. But for me, I, it's the creativity, right? Let's take it a step further. These, pe like, these people are in front of a window, but they're also in front of a different world. It's like the reflection is also the backdrop of their lives. I don't know. It's, but you know, you got to open up the space within a smaller space with the reflection and even the positioning of them in that frame of the reflection. It looks like they're in between two buildings. So, you know, sometimes we gotta look a little deeper. I'm glad I saw it. I spy with my little eye, I seen it. <laughs> so I work a lot with like framing and composition and reflection and texture and like how can I make this a little more interesting so for you to point that out it's like that was intentional to not just have them on like a building that just had a glass wall it's like okay well we have this other building across the street and the sun is right and it's reflecting on that which is putting back behind them so it is a whole scene within itself mm, fire you know, that last image was obviously special, but Brian, here's image number three. Now, we both shot weddings before, and to me, when I saw this image, I thought of the iconic first look shot. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but we'll get to that, but I'll tell you what, the, what this piece did for me as far as feelings. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the sense of, in, of excitement the tears of joy are both evident. You get both aspects of <laughs> happiness and, jo and joy in two different emotions, you know, by crying or by being excited. And you get both of that here. Two lovely ladies with locks. And to me, this just shows Black love, but the essence of what Black love is, which is all around love in general, not just pigeonholing it. Mm -hmm. And this moment did that for me in this space. And you obviously caught it, you know, in the, in our business, they call it the, the money shot, so. <laughs> so I think one thing that has helped me capture moments is doing street photography. Because street photography, you don't know what's gonna happen when it's gonna happen. You just kind of have to anticipate things happening, right? Mm -hmm. And if you see it happening, it's too late. So you have to be ready before it happens. So this is the first look. And oftentimes when I would do um, wedding consultations, I would try to encourage couples to do a first look. And they would be like, oh, you know, well, my parents didn't do this and we're not supposed to see each other before. And it's like, whose rules are these? Like whose man said this, right? <laughs> so it's like, you don't have to go by anything. This is your day, you can do what you want, but let me tell you the benefits of it, right? So one of the things is this is the time that the two of the people will be able to spend alone without anybody else over there. Like, oh, take a selfie with me. Oh, you look good. Let's get on Snapchat real quick. It's like your wedding day is going to go by so fast and you're not going to remember 90% of it, but I'm going to capture it for you. But like the things you're not going to remember, you're going to have to look back at the photos and be like, dang, that did happen. So this is a time to like slow it down just a little bit and enjoy the moment for what it is and kind of tell each other that you love each other before saying it in front of everybody else, right? So usually like um, people say, oh, like I don't want to see her before because like I want to see her walking down the aisle. It's like that moment is still going to be special because you've anticipated that your whole life as soon as you knew what love was and as soon as you knew what a wedding was, you've been thinking about it for yourself. So that moment is still going to happen, but it's like, this is a time where you can have together alone without anybody else. You can have those raw emotions. And instead of everybody else trying to have their cell phone in the aisle, trying to get the bride walking down, it's like, <laughs> you, you can, you can see this in the flesh right here. Nice. And while people are in your way and she can't see you and you can't see her, it's like, let's just, let's have a moment without everybody, without like, the raw raw without all that extra stuff and just have a raw emotion. And that's exactly what happened with them. So uh, Paris, the one that's like crying, I met her <laughs> in South America. We mm. were at a volcano, like a mud volcano. And wow. I was with my family 
And you know, when you're abroad and you see black people traveling, it's like, cousin, hey cousin, okay. So we were at the front of the line and you know, reparations is real and you get it where you can. So it's like, look, if you can jump the line, we're gonna jump the line right now. So my family and I, we look back, it's like, oh, cousin, no, no, no. Don't stand at the back of the line. Come up here with us. Jump in front of all these other folks and wow. come up here with us. <laughs> so I met her there and we kind of <laughs> stayed Facebook friends and then became Instagram friends. And then like that was years before their wedding. So you mm. just never know where in life you're going to meet wow. somebody that will just come back around later on. So that's why you always got to be nice to people and say kind things because it's going to come back at some point. It's going to come back negative or it's going to come back positive. And that's up to you how it comes back. Mm. Well, wow. you know, one thing, one thing I learned from doing projects where representation was the goal uh, was that you might have one image in your head or, 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 or one, I guess, monolith in, in mind that, you know, people are going to like push to the forefront, but in, in doing a project where, you know, you're photographing people and, that are wearing like the same thing to, and it's stripped down to that you can see like just their face or even have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. You get to see like the, the differences of us all, like, you know, the stereotype, you all look alike, that goes to every race. You know, if, yeah. you're, ignorant, if you're on the outside of one, one culture, everybody in that, that culture might look like one thing to you because you're just lumping them all into one thing. But something like this, again, I, I knew I could rely on you all to, come with the representation. So we just, we just went from a father and a daughter to a traditional couple to a non-traditional couple. Um, and, you know, this is in, you know, it looks like they're in like some tropical pa paradise with like different trees in the background. But um, the question I have for you is like, how much of an impact do you feel like you capture with this shot? Like this is individuals' lives right here, but this is also a representation of mm. a community of people. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I never want to be the person that it's like all my couples look the same, right? So I've in my in my work, I have photographed traditional couples, like you said, non-traditional couples. I've captured couples that have been transgender couples, and I always want to make it a safe space because the world is already so cruel. Mm. And I love people. I don't care. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you look like. It's about energy. And if you make me feel good and I make you feel good, we can be friends, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about like, oh, you have to look like this because this is what makes money. No, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to build relationships with people. So I had a, a client reach out to me years ago at this point, And he said, hey, uh, I, I really like your work. Um, there's something you should know. Like I was born a a female now I'm a male so like if that's going to be a thing and I immediately got on the phone with him and was like you know what I prayed for you I didn't know it was you but I prayed to be a safe space for anybody who is looking for photography because it's it's real out here and people judge and they they're mean and sometimes people do it for a quick check but it's not about that so I called him and I, we had a conversation and that was my first transgender wedding and I've done three so far. Oh. So, yeah, you just, representation matters. Once you, once you see yourself, it's like, all right, I feel comfortable and confident in this person that not only are they gonna capture me, but they're gonna let me be me. They're not gonna use me as a stepping stone for whatever else. It's like, this, this is a real genuine relationship. So that was important to me. Dude, you just said it, Brian. We're watching, um... She, even the storytelling is occurring in the progression of the pictures that she's chosen. The girl and the father, the girl, the girl with the partner, the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Brian, that's just a lead in for you to tell us about this next picture, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, what's the, what's the, uh, <laughs> first comes love then comes marriage. Then and then comes after the baby that, and the baby and the, exactly, exactly. If you're going in an order, <laughs> that's probably the order that these photos happen to be in. There's a child next, and you know, one image that we've seen, you know, as kids is that triumphant pose, <laughs> fist clenched, raising the air, victory, or it means power to the people, or it means fight on. You know, you know, different people have used it uh, over time. But in this particular image, it's a little boy. 
mm-hmm. and his and, and the safety and the comfort of his room on his little play mat, you know. And to be honest, it could be him with the black fist raised, or he could be playing with some toys and thinking he's a, a rocket ship, you know, or a blade, yeah. blade, blaze, and a monster or something, you know. Yeah. It might be on his mind, but you know. I would love to hear more from you. Oh, wait a minute. Side note. I do notice he has on a pair of New Balances, so I know. You can so you know he's from the area. The area. I'm sorry, the area. The area boy. I'm from the area. <laughs> so that is actually one of the, I shot his newborn photos, right? That was one of the last newborn <laughs> sessions I did. Not that he it wasn't good, but it was just like, this is too much. <laughs> But um, he's four years old. His mother contacted me uh, um, to shoot his images for his fourth year around the sun, right? Mm. So we were in his room. We're playing with dinosaurs and trucks and all these things because the the way to get children to be in an image that they want to be in is let them do what the fuck they want to do. Come on. Like, don't try to make them do anything because they're going to rebel. That's not what they want to do. Let them be who they are. So he's showing me his action figures and he's posing and he's like, look, get me doing this. So like, that's what I got him doing. And the thing is when you're four, you think you can do anything because the world hasn't told you that you can't. So he is doing what he does and what he knows how to do. And I just hope that he keeps that same mentality. And I hope the world doesn't crush any kind of hope Mm. that he has, because as we know, it is known to do that. So that was important to me because it shows how he feels about himself. And I just hope that he carries that through life. Yeah. Yeah. That's deep. I mean, you know, picture images like this are, you know, I would say more, even more special to us now, Brian. Yeah. Um, Since having children, like you start to recognize that a photographer is literally, you know, we're literally documenting the growth and life experiences of somebody. And once again, this kid is, (laughs) this kid is going to grow up to be our age and look back and be like, damn, twofold moms made sure we had pictures so I can enjoy moments like this. Yeah. Second, that photographer was dope because I don't know how she got me looking like in this moment. So it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing through and through. Honestly, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I got I got to say this, just keeping with the symmetry and, and, and the composition of things, you know, I, I like this photo before, but now again, just like looking at it, um, he's got the arm raised and it's just like super straight, but he's got the other one back here balancing and it, and it, and it makes a nice diagonal mm-hmm. um, crop from like, you know, from from point to point. Right, kind of um, like a little lead in line. Right. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, his shirt is white. It's, it's like light on the bottom. The balance is uh, like a yin and a yang with like the bed frame. So that's kind of like look, looking at it now. And I know, again, when you see it large in life and you're in your market, uh, yeah. it, it's uh, it's going to affect you a different kind of way too. So yeah. you know, I and definitely- his mom took an image of him over there. So, you know, nice. it's nice for him to be for it and be like, you know what, I'm on the side of a building in DC. And even though he's not processing it like that now, he's probably like, whoa, like, that's me. That's yeah, what he thinks. That's me. Yeah. And it's yeah. important for him to feel that because if he keeps feeling those different levels of yeah. that's me, I can do that. Then nothing's going to hold him back. Yeah. 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 Damn. Well, Brian, I'm, I'm lucky enough <laughs> to intro this last image because it has a lady who I think is amazing in the image. Well, I've come to find out as being the mother of Ashley Bing. And if you guys haven't met Ashley's mother, I, I was first introduced to them um, in a photo that Ashley took that went viral um, when she did a photo shoot with her parents for their anniversary, was it, Ashley? Yep. Yeah, the and, 38th anniversary at the time. Yeah, uh, and what can you briefly tell us the sto- the the history behind that image, and then I can segue into this one. Okay, so um, my parents got married 40 years ago at this point, 41 years ago. But at the time, um, they had a wedding photographer put the images in uh, the lab to get developed. So the lab caught fire and they did not get their wedding images. So 
38 years later, I'm thinking like, okay, what can I do for my parents for their anniversary? Usually I'll get them something, I'll send them to dinner, you know, these things. But I thought, okay, Ashley, Ashley, you're a whole ass wedding photographer out here. Like, come on now, sis, you got to do better. So I surprised them with a photo shoot. I got my mom's makeup done, got a bouquet made, rented some dresses. My dad has a tuxedo. So I just told them, save this date for me. Just that's all you got to do. Save this date for me. So we got up early. Mom got her makeup done. I took him around town. We did a whole photo shoot. My niece was my my audio assistant, so which means she carried the Bluetooth speaker for me. <laughs> nice. But it was just a good time, and it meant so much to them because they got to kind of recreate some images that they never got a chance to see. Mm. So I made a whole wedding album for them. And anytime somebody goes over the house, my mom's like, look, look at, look at this wedding album we have. They're like, girl, y'all been married for 40 years. What you talking about? I don't care about <laughs> your wedding pictures. But so it's, it was really nice to do that for them. I think that just conveys the power of storytelling and, you know, the power of us being uh, image creators, uh, memory captures, you know, like real moments. And I, I say that uh, about your mom because I actually got to m meet your mother in person. Yeah. And the energy that you see in the pictures, if you've ever seen a picture of Ashley's mom and her, or, you know, either or, is it's, it's truly, it's, it's more defined, it can't be more defined than it is in this picture. And this picture is special to me twofold because your mother is clearly, you know, sharing a moment with it's either her niece or her granddaughter, but the, the granddaughter or niece has on a mask around uh, under her ch under her chin, mm -hmm. so it also lets me know. I've talked to a, some friends earlier today. I'm like, Liz, listen, anything, anytime you see a mask in media now, we know when it was. <laughs> like we yeah. know the era it came from. So it just shows, like you know, the joy that can still occur even in these times. Like yeah. you know, this is still a shared moment of love and happiness, and and that's what I got from the image. Yeah. So like, and it's funny that you say, you know, the mask under her chin, what I like to call the chin bra. It's like, it, it's like pre-COVID or post-COVID, right? So I went, to school, I went to school in New Orleans and I was a sophomore when Hurricane Katrina happened. So we used to uh, refer to things as pre-Katrina and post-Katrina mm. because it's like before Katrina happened, things were a certain way. After right. Katrina, they were a different ways. So yeah. With the chin bra, it, it lets you know what time we're in, right? So you know that we're in COVID. Maybe it's a quarant it's, we're supposed to be quarantining. We're supposed to be in the house or whatever. But because of that, we haven't been able to be close to our family. We have Thanksgiving coming up. They're talking about doing Zoom calls for Thanksgiving. Don't go to your family's house. So this moment is very important to me because it's my mother and my niece. And they are touching, right? So they're giving each other a high five and back to like my street photography, I anticipated the moment. I knew it was getting ready to come. So I'm standing above them and I shoot it and I'm shooting through it. So before they even do the high five, I'm already going like this on my shutter because I know it's coming. And I've probably took 40 pictures to get that one moment right there. Wow. So it's important because you can't touch <clears throat> people. You can't hug people. You see people and you do like the little elbow dap. And it's just like, this is crazy. I hate it. Air, air I hate out. it here. One star does not recommend. Ugh. So <laughs> Yelp for Earth, right? If Don't come down Yelp. here. <laughs> it's awful. Yelp, re Yelp review for 2020. <laughs> it's trash. Throw the whole thing away. Return to sender. <laughs> exactly so that's why it's important to me because they're just having a moment they're close we're at Allen's Palm we're just outside away from people because you can't even be close to anybody so it's just my family being my family that's it so it's, it's going to be an important moment for me because I love my family at the end of the day hey I I think the best people to, to um you know it's like, it's, like, it's like you have waves of people that are in your circle that you shoot with first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, family, friends, or household friends, and then it keeps going out. You know, yeah. obviously the priority takes place with, you know, if there's money over here, you you come to the front of the line. Right. <laughs> but, we but, gotta pay these bills. Exactly. Listen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so definitely uh, shooting with your family, you know, definitely do that. Uh, more and, and, and as much as you can, you know, you touched on some earlier, you mentioned um, memories, right? So this young man with this fist raise, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, he's, and I'm thinking about this because I'm doing this with, with, with my daughter and I just realized it, that she, every day she says to me, daddy, remember this, remember that? And I know she's saying things that I told her. So she's like, yeah. re- basically just doing what I just did with her. Like, Savvy, you remember this? Uh-huh. Um, but a lot of it is photos and we have a lot more photos today than we did growing up, you know, um, and it's just going to get, you know, worse or or better however you see it you know if you if you think photos overload of photos is too much then it's worse but if you think yeah. a lot of photos is great right. that's, that's, you're never going you're never going to forget anything because you know it's always we have a lot of there. access to right. so much technology access. to capture these and a quick story so when i was growing up um my dad was always the cameraman he uh took a lot of video of our family. But the thing is, he didn't necessarily have the funds to purchase the video camera. So what he would do, he would go get a video camera, do the videos, then return it. Then like when we need another one, he would go get a video, do the video camera, do the videos and return it. And it's just like, looking back, it's like, bruh. But I mean, it's like, you had to do what you had to do to get those memories. Yeah. And it's like, if you're not resourceful, then sometimes you miss out. And now we don't even have to worry about that because like people say oh what's the best camera that i should get like you shoot with this like what's the best camera and it's like the best camera is the one in your hand like whatever you have at this point right because i always have my cell phone with me and i'm constantly using my cell phone as practice like i'm framing things up i'm trying to do like the rule of thirds okay if this is the composition like how would i put somebody and (laughs) a funny story the other day one of my brother's friends asked me you know is the is the the magic in the camera or is it in the editing? And I had to make it like a teachable moment. I was like, hear ye, hear ye, gather around children. Like mm-hmm. everybody needs to hear this because I'm gonna only say it once. The magic is not in the camera. It's not in the equipment. It's not in the editing software. It's in the shooter. So like, if you got it, you got it. And if you don't, you don't. And Hello. At the end of the day, that's what it is. So you can shoot with anything. I can shoot with my cell phone. If you have a $7,000 camera, if you don't know what you're doing with it, you just wasted how much? Seven thousand dollars. Let's go, Ashley. Put me in a game, coach. Talk that talk. Man. Talk that talk. <laughs> Listen, put me in a game, coach. <laughs> Shooter talk. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's it. It's just like you gotta work on your craft. If if you want to be good at it, my thing is one percent every day. Improve one mm-hmm. percent every day, and it's something that I learned from my trainer. It's like no matter what it is. Just work at it a little bit every day and you're going to get there. Amazing. Amazing. I think hearing you talk is, uh, is it shows in your work from what we've seen, what we've gone through here and, you know, over this interview, it's, it's reflective, you Thank know, you. and, you know, I, I think it's important for people like you to tell your story so that people understand it's, it's not a microwave situation. You yeah. didn't just wake up and just get it popping. Like you put in work. Yeah. And I think that's something that gets lost consistently. So, you know, I know I can speak on behalf of Brian. We're really proud to be able to talk to you in this capacity and really just, you know, take a peek inside your mind into how you feel about these images and and more so how you feel about photography as a whole. So it's been really dope. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I would I would love to know uh, and love to give you opportunities to just take this time to just like share more. Like if these are a part of larger projects that you want to, you know, um, ex- expound what upon. Going on, on. <laughs> that too. What's next? <laughs> so what's next is me. And I, I talk so much about like the wedding industry because that's how I'm, where I spent a lot of my time. And now just kind of moving forward, I want to spend more time and more energy with entrepreneurs and branding images, whether that's small businesses, solopreneurs, when it's just you doing the work, I want to give quality images to that group of people. Because if you don't invest in your own images, people aren't gonna invest in you. So I, Mm. I want everybody to understand like it is important to have quality images when trying to either sell themselves, sell a product or just whatever they're doing. So that's the lane I kind of want to get more focused on. I've been doing it, but I haven't been pushing it as much as I should. So that's my next thing to get that going faster and stronger. So like you said, this isn't a, a microwave society. I've been doing this for 10 years now. So I'm excited to see what the next five years, the next 10 years looks like. Indeed. 
Well, we got we got your social handle right underneath your image right now. But um, how else can people find uh, anything from Ashley Bing or, or any projects that you're working on right now? All right. So as you say, you have my Instagram at Ashley Bing. And I also have a secondary Instagram, which is my street photography. It's at Bing in the streets. Ooh. So, <laughs> <laughs> every you time know, I said it, bang, I be bang. in the streets. Every time, you know, sometimes I be in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not for the streets. Know the difference. I be in the streets, but I'm not for the streets. Yeah. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Yo. Yo. That's hilarious. You're a nut. But my website is <laughs> ashleybingphotography.com. All right, word. Well, like you said, we mentioned on the show, you're always at the front of my head. So whenever there's something new coming up, you know, you're going to get that call. Um, but, you know, whenever there's a chance to, you know, hop on Shooter with Shooters, or just. Yeah, yo, this has been you know. amazing, yo. You know, leave us some comments under the thing. Let us know what you think about Ashley. Um, we need to get her back on the show. Definitely you got know. the vibes. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely got the vibe. So make sure y'all tap in and show her some love on her page. Give her a follow. Check out the work and stay tuned. Her stories are dope too. Hey, listen. Be on them stories a little bit. Next time you <laughs> got to get your brother there and playing some tunes in the background. Tell him to get the lo-fi together. Absolutely. I will. <laughs> I will. All right. Until next time, I'm Brian Summers. I'm Dio Kosoko. And I'm Ashley Bing. See, that just it just, it just sounded perfect right there. <laughs> Follow, like, subscribe, comment. We out. Peace.